Hello, welcome back to Becky Bakes. Today I'm going to make strawberry and almond tarts. We don't normally cook with strawberries, but sometimes you have just a few left in the fridge that are not quite fresh, let's say, and uh, it's a good way of using those up. So, here we go. So for this recipe, you really only need three ingredients. You need puff pastry, you need your strawberries, and then you need marzipan. And marzipan is available all the year round, even though we think of it as a Christmas thing. Um, and you don't need a lot, so if you buy a block which is 500 grams, it'll last you a while. You can do this several times over. So to begin with, I've got my baking tray and I've lined it with a piece of silicon paper. And the next thing to do is open the pastry. Now one thing I would say is don't get your pastry out of the fridge too soon, because if you're doing this on a very hot day, like I am, it will get a bit too soft. So unroll it, keep it on its greaseproof paper, and then you need to have two cutters. And I've got a box that's multiple sizes of cutter, and I've chosen these two. They measure three and seven eighths inches, which is 88 millimeters, and it's worn off this one, but I can tell you it's two and a quarter inches and that's five and three quarter centimetres. And you need two which fit inside each other so that you can cut a big circle and then mark a smaller circle. So they can be, you can make them tiny, like little volivants, or you can make them as big as this. It's entirely up to you how big they are. Now the oven is on to gas mark six, and all I do is cut my circles. Now, remember this is going to be sweet, so we use the wavy side of the cutter because that denotes sweetness. If you were making scones and you had cheese ones and plain ones, people would know, if they know these things, that the ones cut with a wavy cutter were the sweet ones. So get as many as you can out of this. And you can do this with gluten-free puff pastry. And it works almost as well. It doesn't quite rise in the same way. You don't get the flakes quite as well, but you get a lovely brown biscuity texture. So get them as close together as you can. And I've got two, four, six, eight out of that. So now these go onto the baking tray. You can see this is a little bit soft. pieces like this left over, you don't have to just throw that away, but you mustn't screw it all up to re-roll it. You need to fold it all back over itself to keep all the layers that some wonderful machine has made for you. Now as you can see, that's a piece of dough that I could re-roll and keep going and do another tray, but I'll save that and I'll do that later. So, the next thing to do is to take your other cutter and you're going to just score a circle inside the, um, the wavy edge. So, try and get it fairly central. Press down fairly hard. If you go all the way through, really, it's not the end of the world. But you need to just create a border around the edge which will rise up and hold your filling in so it doesn't slide off the top of the pastry. There we are, that's our border. And then the next thing is to just prod the middle with a fork. We don't want this to rise up and push the filling off, we want this to stay quite low down. So if we mark it with a fork several times over, that will make air holes that the, the, uh, the air can come out and it won't make the pastry rise up as much as the outside edge will do. So I think I'm doing sort of six prods. That's our pastry ready. Now, 
The next thing we do is our little ball of marzipan. And how many have I got? Two, four, six, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I've done eight. Okay. What you need is a piece of marzipan about that sort of size. And it's like a small walnut. It weighs about 10 grams. That's as much as you need. And I've got some done. So you flatten it in your hand, make it into a disc, and then sit it in the center. Now if you're making, whoops, tiny, if you're making tiny strawberry tarts, your pieces of marzipan will need to be that much smaller. So a bit of judgment here if you alter the size. And if you wrap your marzipan up, it will keep for a very, very long time. It's available all year round, so don't worry about not being able to get it. Right, last one. So, I think I'll just make that a little bit bigger. There we are. Now we turn to our strawberries. And some of mine are a little bit overripe. You can see like this one. It's it's not a perfect strawberry. People might not want to eat that if they saw it, but if you cook it, it softens the strawberry, it brings out the flavour, and nobody will know it's a less than perfect strawberry. So if you're going to do this with a child, because this is eminently something that you could do in the school holidays, all you need to do with your strawberry is cut off the stalky bit and then teach them good practice. So tuck away three fingers, make a bridge with the other two and cut between the bridge and then their fingers are safe. I've done all of those other ones and I'll show you now how we put them on. So if the strawberry is quite small, you need two strawberries, oops, per tart. They're slippery, be careful. And try and get them to stay in the middle. If they're a bit bigger, you can put them alongside each other. They really are quite big, aren't they? We'll have to see whether that slides off or not. Hope for the best on that. This is quite ripe. And then the other thing I found in my fridge was a peach. And I'm just wondering whether a wedge of ripe peach would work, say, say in between those two, so one of those flat peaches so you can cut in towards the stone, um, maybe there as well. I haven't done that before so we'll see what happens with a piece of peach, perhaps try another one, it's probably not the safest way to cut. Right, there we are, so strawberry and peach for those. Now the last thing, if you want to, bearing in mind this is only three ingredients, you can brush the edge with a bit of water, taking care not to dislodge your fruit. And then you can sprinkle over a little tiny bit of caster sugar. And what that does is to just make the crust brown, speckly brown and just looks quite appetising. Right, there we are. What could be simpler than that? And the idea is that the edges rise up and hold in the filling and the strawberries will shrink as they cook and you will get a sort of jammy texture with the strawberries. It really is quite nice and it couldn't be easier, could it? In the summer you don't want to spend too long in the kitchen so let's get these in the oven. Um, about 20 minutes, but it depends how big they are. The bigger they are, the longer they'll take. Quite a high shelf, gas mark 6, 200, 180. Now, they're done. They are very, very hot. Don't try and eat them now, for goodness sake. You must let them cool down. And you can see that the ones that have worked best are the ones with the four smaller strawberries. The, the ones with the bigger strawberries have sort of come over the edge a bit. But you get the idea, the side comes up and it holds everything in. So let them cool um, and then enjoy them later. Well, there we are.
strawberry and almond tarts with a hint of peach. Eat them on the day that you make them. They're okay the next day, but they go a bit soft. Um, let them cool down so that they're either tepid or cold. And I think you'll enjoy these. It's a good way of using up strawberries when they're not quite as nice as you want them to be. So have a go, send us a photo. Thanks.